Hi and welcome back to the giant world of tiny things and another macro video. Today we're going to compare the Venus Optics 2.5 to 5x Extreme Macro Lens to the holy grail of macro photography, the Canon MPE 65mm Extreme Macro Lens that reaches all the way from 1x life size up to 5x life size magnification. And both these lenses have their own place in the macro universe, they are both pretty awesome. And spoiler alert, in most cases I personally prefer the Venus Optics lens over the Canon lens. And by that is, I'm going to tell you right after the intro. Let's go. Alright, so in this video we're going to examine both these lenses and we're going to break it up into three different categories that I believe to make up the overall quality of a lens. Starting with category number one, the image quality. And that is the most important category as it just determines how sharp your images are going to be and how crisp the lens projects your subject onto the sensor plane. So in this category we're going to have a look at the varying f-stops and how consistent the individual image quality is across different f-stops. In the second category we're going to look at the amount of light that both the lenses let pass through and that reaches your sensor plane at varying f-stops because f-stops are not normed such as T-stops are in the movie making industry, which means that f2.8 on this lens does not necessarily result in the same amount of light as it would on this lens. In this video we're going to find out which lens lets in more light or if those lenses are completely equal. And then there is our last category and that is the ease of use and how well the individual lenses handle. Because if one lens just handles much better and is much easier to use than the other lens, that will probably result in better images. It's not going to tire out your arms as quickly if it's more lightweight. It's going to be easier to handle and it's going to make for better and sharper images and just for a more joyful experience overall. Alright, so let's jump right into category number one, the image quality. And to create reproducible results and really be able to compare the image quality of both these lenses, I decided to take my test shots inside in a studio environment where I photographed the wing scales of a butterfly with both these lenses at varying magnification ratios and each with the f-stops f2.8, f8 and f16. And here are the results. As you can see in these images, the Canon MPE 65 is slightly sharper than the Venus Optics lens, yet the difference is very very slim and you really have to pay close attention and zoom in 200 or even 200% in order to be able to tell that difference. Is it worth it to buy the Canon lens for this reason? Well, maybe. The answer to this question really depends on what you're going to use your images for. If you're going to create blown up huge ass prints, then it's probably worth it. If you're using your images exclusively online and on screen, well, you're not going to notice the difference at all unless you're displaying them at really high resolutions or if you're going to crop into your images to further increase the already extreme magnification ratio. Next up, let's examine the amount of light that both these lenses let pass through and that reaches your sensor. To determine the amount of light that both these lenses let pass through, I decided to take the test shots for this category inside as well, where I used a continuous light source and the manual shooting mode with the exact same settings for both the camera lenses and that allowed me to create very, very comparable results. And the result isn't surprising at all, especially after looking at the last category, the Canon MPE 60. 
65 lens is ever so slightly better and lets in slightly more light but the difference again is very very marginal. So far the lenses are pretty darn close except that the Canon MPE 65 covers double the amount of magnification range and is slightly better in both the categories that we looked at so far. Yet I already told you that I personally prefer the Venus optics lens. And so the reason has to lie within the last category, ease of use and how well do the lenses handle. And just by comparing the sheer size of these two lenses, you can tell that the Venus Optics lens is going to be a lot more lightweight and that is therefore going to be a lot easier to handle than the Canon NPE 65. Now in the intro of this video I told you that I prefer the Venus Optics lens and the reason for that is that it's so much easier to use, especially if you're photographing insects in the field. Now the first reason is that it's just much easier to hold your camera steady if it's more lightweight and the difference in weight between those two lenses really is quite noticeable especially if you're photographing over a longer period of time if you're going for a macro walk and you're really carrying the camera around the MPE 65 is going to tire out your arms much more quickly than this small lens will. It's also much easier to transport you can even transport it in your jeans pocket and it's not gonna be too much of a bother whereas that's completely impossible with the Canon MPE 65. Now that difference becomes even more noticeable as soon as we fully extend the lens barrel all the way up to 5x. Now all of, so, all of a sudden this lens is probably 12 to 13 inches long whereas the Venus Optics lens at 5x is probably solid 5 inches shorter than the MPE 65. It also has a way smaller front element and both these factors make it less intimidating to insects because first of all it's much easier to approach an insect if you're not casting a shadow on it because insects generally interpret shadows as approaching predators they are coming from above and that's what causes those insects to flee. So if you're just slowly moving towards it with a rather small front element and you're not casting a shadow on it and even if you are if the shadow isn't as large it's gonna be much less intimidating to your potential subjects but most importantly it's much easier to focus on your subject because at 5x your field of view is microscopic and at the same time your whole field of view is only seven millimeters wide on a full-frame camera with a crop sensor it's even less and that means that it's really hard not only to focus on your subject but to already locate your subject and kind of get it into your frame so what happens is that you will be finding yourself looking through the viewfinder, looking at a blurry mess and you have a hard time even making out where your subject is. So you'll be kind of glancing over your lens and trying to locate your subject, roughly pointing the camera lens at it and then adjusting and fine tuning your focus and composition in the viewfinder. And with a huge bulky lens like this, it's almost impossible to do that without really moving it around too much and kind of retracting it in order to see your subject. And all this movement causes your subjects to flee and to run off because there's something black and large moving around them and I generally just don't like that. Whereas this lens is much less intimidating and if you're approaching an insect with it it's first of all not as large, it's not casting such a heavy shadow on your subject but second of all you don't have to kind of move it around so much in order to be able to look at your subject and locate it because the front element is so much smaller and that just allows you to kind of glance over it much easier, locate your subject without moving the camera lens out of the way and that's causing no turbulences in the air, it's not something big and black moving around your subject and it's much less scary to your subject and therefore you'll just get a higher ratio of images that you will get of your subjects. Now there's a couple more categories that I really didn't touch on so far. One of them is the missing filter thread of this lens. This lens does not provide a filter thread, meaning that you can't attach a ring flash, you can't attach a CPL filter, you can't attach additional close-up elements if that's what you're looking to do to push and increase your magnification ratio any further. So that is a disadvantage that this lens just comes with. We've got the filter thread here, but on this lens you don't have any threading, nothing at all to attach it. So you can make it work by just holding it around your lens, sort of like this. And it works, but it's just not as convenient as it would be if you actually could attach it to the front element of the lens, because then you'd have your hand free to hold your subject in place and 
it it just make the whole shooting process more flexible. So that's in my opinion the biggest downside of the Laowa lens. That's why I still use my Canon MPE 65 sometimes, mostly in the studio. For example, recently I did some cross polarized shots of crystals and that would be impossible with a lens like this simply because you can't attach a CPL filter. So before you make a decision, take that into consideration. However, Venus Optics at least provided a dedicated ring light that you can attach to the thread that this lens comes with and it's an LED light so it's not really going to be able to freeze motion blur but at least it's going to be working as a fill light. It's going to make it much easier for you to focus on your subject because this lens has a manual aperture whereas the Canon MPE65 has an actual electronically controlled aperture, meaning that it's much easier to focus on your subject in terms of light with this lens, because the aperture is wide open up to the very moment when you press the shutter button and that's when the aperture blades snap into place and narrow down that beam of light that is, or the cone of light that is passing through your lens and therefore result in a sharper image. Whereas with this lens you have to manually step down your lens to let's say f5.6 if that's the aperture that you're going for and that's just going to result in a quarter of the amount of light that you have available to focus on your subject of the amount of light that the Canon lens would provide you with. Again, I'm just talking about the process of focusing on your subject. In the final image, the difference between the f-stops is very, very marginal, as we already talked about. And so, yeah, it's just easier to focus in terms of lighting with the Canon MPE 65. But overall, I still find it much easier to focus with this lens because of its smaller lens barrel and its smaller front element. Now I think we got everything covered. We didn't talk much about the working distance between those two lenses. Again, the working distance is very, very similar between those two lenses. The Canon MPE65 provides the better working distance, but again, the difference is not deal-breakingly large. That's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, leave me a thumbs up as usual, and I'm going to see you sometime soon with another macro video. Until then, stay creative, keep shooting, and have a good time. Cheers.